When it comes to the best athletes to ever play the game, we know one thing for certain. Every single one of them has a competitive chip on their shoulder that would not allow them to be taken down. We know that the greatest of all times have an internal fire, an absolute relentless nature to become the best that is built through hardship. And so when it comes to the case of Steph Curry, one thing is very obvious. The greatest shooter we have ever seen, the generational talent who changed the way basketball is played, actually has a very deceiving baby-faced grin. Because Steph Curry has proven to be a basketball assassin who is also secretly hiding a dark past of relentless hate and bully. Steph will not talk about this past because as they say, the best revenge is to live well. And Steph is certainly living well with four championships and two MVPs. However, this relentless hate needs to see the light of day as it was this very hate that caused Steph Curry to go on his own personal revenge tour. A revenge tour that made him into the player we see now. Well, what's up guys, Mike here, and the story of Steph Curry begins with the fact that he never had it easy at all. As a young child playing for an NBA father, Steph was very hard on himself as his own self-proclaimed reality check would come at the age of just 13. When playing in the AAU National Championships, Steph played terrible. And as he played terrible, he heard all of the hate you would expect from a 5'5", 13-year-old kid who looked more like he was 10. You're too small, you're too scrawny, you're a joke, right to his face, but this time he felt it because he didn't have on-court success. This moment, at the age of 13, truly shook him, but while many get down, at 13, Steph's mom told him, Steph, I'm only going to tell you this one time. No one gets to write your story but you. Not some scouts, not some tournament, not these other kids, none of these people. Just you. This tournament, at 13, lit a fire under Steph that would never be extinguished. As he would say, man, that moment stuck with me. Anytime I've been snubbed or underrated or even flat out disrespected, I've just remembered those words and I've persevered. Enter that huge chip on the shoulder we mentioned before. Now luckily for Steph though, around this time a growth spurt would hit him and he would sprout up to 5 foot 11. It was at this height where he made the decision to go and tell his NBA father, I don't care what anyone else says, I want to go pro. But there was a big problem. Lacking strength, he still shot the ball from his waist. Oh, listen, son, if you want to play in the college, you're going to have to bring it up and get it up above your head, over your forehead. So we worked at it all summer. I really had to break the whole form down from the ground up and reteach you know, yourself how to, how to shoot the ball. And for about the first month and a half, I couldn't even leave the paint and shoot because I, I just wasn't strong enough, didn't have the coordination to really. He'd be back there at times uh, crying, not want to work on his game. He had to do it rep after rep after rep to a point where he was able to master it. This relentless work ethic would pay off as Steph became a star, eventually leading his team to the state finals as a high school senior, which raises the question, how is it possible that Steph Curry received a zero major division one scholarship offer? But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank our friends at DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Because as we all know, it is the best time of the year, I think. Basketball is back, and that means, of course, DraftKings has us covered. All new customers who bet $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly, instantly. And going even further, you can use those bonus bets on a chance at same game parlays to get an even bigger payout. And if sports betting is still not available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy, where you're going to have a shot to win cash prizes. So make sure to go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, again, bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That is personally what I'll say, just an incredible deal. That's promo code CORZEMBA, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into the video. You want to play for, you know, Duke, NC State, Carolina, Wake Forest. I don't ever remember even seeing it. I do know that when I did see him, I thought, man, he is little. The big time schools didn't recruit him because of his, um, his appearance, I think, his size, his stature. People just saw him as uh, a low major, mid-major guard that uh, they were a dime a dozen. 
I, I saw brilliance. Every single major school passed on Steph because all they could see was his height and his weight. Somehow none of them could see the ball sinking through the net. This included Steph's father's own school, Virginia Tech, who passed on him even as a walk-on, and also Duke. When Steph was in high school, he wanted to go to ACC school, wanted to go to Duke. And I remember you said, you know, Steph would like to go there. And I, I called Johnny one day and I said, Hey, listen, you know, Dell's son, Stefan, he's, he got back with me the next day. And, and this was just to walk on. This was just to be a walk on. Yeah. And he said, yeah. yeah, we're full up, full up this year, maybe next year though. None of this would matter though, as Steph was exactly where he was meant to be. When Steph committed to Davidson, his mom would tell coach Bob McKillop, we'll fatten him up for you, don't worry. To which his coach would reply, we like him just fine, we'll take him as he is. These words at this point in his life really meant everything to Steph Curry. Up until this point in his career, everyone had doubted him. But at Davidson, coach Bob McKillop would build the offense around him and just let him play. We had seen what Steph could do when everyone had doubted him before. Now, someone believed in him, and the result was almost disastrous. And in the first half, he had nine turnovers. We're down 18 points at halftime. Put him in the starting lineup in the second half. We won the game. He had uh, some probably doubts creep in the, my first college game where I had 13 turnovers. Yes, 13 turnovers in his first game. However, just like at the age of 13, this first college game was a real pivot moment for Steph. Despite the 13 turnovers, Davidson would win as his coach lived up to his word and believed in him, playing him 35 minutes despite the on-court mess. Steph would not take this belief for granted. And in just game two, the seeds of the Steph Curry experiment were proving to work. In game two against the University of Michigan, Steph would score 32 points and prove to himself and everyone else, he not only belonged, yet again, he was a star. As a freshman, Steph would average over 21 points per game as Davidson won 29 games and made the NCAA tournament. However, despite this, Steph still received absolutely zero NBA draft buzz. There was no will he or will he not come back there was however a new twist steph was now a major school darling every elite team including duke wanted steph to transfer to their program now to which he replied at the end of that year everybody in the country wanted steph and when i say that everyone kentucky tennessee everyone wanted stefan to come duke everyone and you called me and said i said well what's up he said dad if if they didn't want me then i don't want them now F and said i'm staying at david's yes steph would tell his dad if they didn't want me then i don't want them now in year two of college steph helped little davidson earn a 10 seat as steph himself averaged over 25 points per game as an all-american already very impressive but the true greats step it up when it counts wouldn't you know it steph curry stepped up first came gonzag Gosselin. and lovedale keeps it for him curry and he points over to his parents. Stephen Curry leads Davidson into the second round. Then in the second round versus number two seed Georgetown and future NBA All-Star center Roy Hibbert. Tennessee a two in trouble. Here's Curry, oh my goodness, another three. The two in the Midwest is in serious jeopardy after losing a 17 point second half lead. And talk about David and Goliath. I submit to you Davidson College to the Sweet 16. This was a March Madness defining win. It is still shown, but Steph was not done yet as Davidson would blow out Wisconsin and then match up against Kansas for a trip to the final four. Now Curry, step back off the dribble. Count it. Big time player, Remember. Steph Curry. Curry lets it go. And buries it. Picks it out, Richard. Crushing defeat maybe, however, Davidson had done what everyone had thought was impossible and Steph's dream was now going to be realized. This tournament run officially put Steph on the NBA map. However, despite his again historic on-court excellence, the scouting reports were ruthless even as a top 10 pick. It was as if no one could see the shooting or the incredible 28 point per game scoring. Steph still faced nothing but either doubt or straight up hate about his height and 
but not a true point. He's going to measure out at just over 6'1", not at 6'3", that he's listed at. And there's just this sense that he's not the big-time athlete. Uh, look, if he wants to be a pro, he's going to be a first-round draft pick. But I think uh, right now his name value is carrying him a little bit more than the actual efficiency on the basketball floor. All pro players are having debates, if you will, about how your skills will translate into the professional ranks. At 6'2", he's extremely small for the NBA shooting guard position. Do not rely on him to run your team. That was the draft report on Stephen Curry. These fears were heightened as Davidson failed to make the NCAA tournament in Steph's final year as a junior. As also in his final game in college, in the second round of the NIT, Steph was outplayed by future great NBA role player Patty Mills, but I'll emphasize great role player. Magic Johnson ended his college career beating Larry Bird in the NCAA tournament final. The all-time greats do not usually take L's in the second round of the NIT to role players. So cue more hate, but this doubt would only make Steph work harder. And yes, the Warriors were the ones that bet on him. But instead of the Warriors treating him like a future franchise player, Steph Curry was bullied by his own veteran teammate Monte Ellis, who was also a smaller scoring guard that was clearly threatened by Steph's style of play. On top of this, Jeremy Lin recalls Keith Smart, Steph's coach for his first two seasons, just did not like Steph. I was with him my rookie year. The coach that we had didn't believe that much in Steph and would bench him a lot. Get on him, yell at him a lot, was just really tough on it almost became normal that every fourth quarter he would get benched for a certain stretch keep in mind this was in steph's second season and the cherry on top here was when management almost made the decision to trade steph curry for chris paul but the warriors trade for andrew bogut and they trade monte ellis rumor has it that the trade initially was for you to go to milwaukee um and Monte Ellis to still be here, Bogey coming in. Mm -hmm. Coach Jackson pulled me out at the locker room. He was like, yo, I said, I'll let you know, like, they wanted you in the trade. He's like, I kind of stepped into and said, I'm going to give you the keys. Ethan wrote that in 2011, the Warriors attempted to trade Steph and Clay to New Orleans for Chris Paul, adding that there were a few teams that could have acquired the Splash Brothers. He also wrote that it wasn't the only time that they tried to trade. Steph Curry. As at the time, they were afraid of Steph's ankle injuries, but all of this led to another turning point, the 2013 playoffs. At this point in time, Steph had played four seasons in the league, but was not yet an all-star. The doubts were still fully there if he was going to be a consistent franchise player, let alone an MVP, until the 2013 playoffs started to change the tide. The Warriors would take down the Nuggets in the first round, and then against a Spurs team that would beat LeBron in the finals, Okay, this is a basketball drill. Eight point lead, and now it's 11. Curry again, 29 points. And here is Curry hitting another three. Diaw now defending Curry, goes right back and floats it in. Pushing it up, down by one. And here is Braceball, Braceball, three with 1.2 seconds left. Overall, that is how this series went. The Warriors were close. They showcased their true potential, but overall, they were just not there yet. Yet. Despite this, though, we had a turning point. The very next season, Steph Curry was named an All-Star, and the year after that, he was the league's MVP and an NBA champ. A rapid leap in success to those who were not paying attention. But to everyone who was, which was not many, the Warriors had 28-1 to 1 odds to win the title going into the 2015 season. But everyone close to Steph Curry knew not to ever bet against him. Because if there's one thing we know about Steph Curry's story, it is this. It contains doubt at every single turn. But through that doubt came a two-time MVP and a four-time NBA champion. Through that doubt came the greatest shooter to ever live, a man who changed the game of basketball. If there's one thing Steph Curry's story really tells us, it's that he proved you can turn doubt and hate into your own personal motivation. You can turn doubt and hate into greatness. So thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this new video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day guys and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.